the slide set of model convergence is an extended version on a talk or live seminar that I gave at Karma a couple of months ago. And after that seminar, after my presentation, we had a discussion and then one of the participants in the audience asked, how can you learn how to troubleshoot non-convergent models? So let's face it, anyone who has used SCM or any other complex analysis technique will face model convergence issues. And it is easy to follow someone explaining the diagnostics, but there is a quite a lot of uh, quite high bar from, from going from, from understanding or high gap going from understanding when someone explains it to being able to apply these diagnostics to your own data. So when you see your software just printing likelihood values over and over and over and it doesn't seem to go anywhere, you don't even get a warning, how do you deal with it? Well, you need practice and uh, I'll first explain my own way of how I teach this to students and then I explain how you can create your own practice cases for yourself. So uh, you, can, you can take a look at how I teach identification, what kind of assignments I give to students by going to Aalto University on uh, mycourses.aalto.fi. I give a course there and uh, you can just go on and search for the course code TU-L0040. That's my advanced course, it is open materials. And uh, there is some convergence, uh, we start talking about convergence in uh, unit five. And there is data analysis uh, assignment four tools. And at the end there are data sets and there is an exercise about convergence problem. So I've generated these simple data sets that have a problem that I know what the problem is, but the students don't know it. And then the students are tasked to analyze the data, do the diagnostics that we discussed in the class, and then tell me what the problem is. Of course, these kind of examples of, of data sets that don't work are not that common because most textbooks and most statistical software that I'm aware of, they only give examples of model data combinations where the techniques work really well, but they don't always do. So how do you create your own practice cases? The idea of creating a practice case is that you uh, create a problematic model data combination and then uh, you create either create a problem and then diagnose yourself. This is a bit boring because you know what the problem is and you're just kind of like trying how the diagnostics work when you already know a problem. Perhaps a more challenging and more fun way of learning how to do diagnostics is to work with a colleague. So uh, create a problematic data model combination and have a colleague troubleshoot it. Challenge your colleagues, see if they can, they can figure out what is the problem in your model data combination. And you can work back and forth so that you challenge your colleague, your colleague challenges you, and then uh, both of you learn how these diagnostics work by applying them. And how do you come up with these uh, problematic cases and, and uh, model data combinations? There are two strategies that I, I, I use. I've used both of these strategies. One is to simulate the data set with a known problem. So it just simulate random numbers and you build the model from those random numbers. It requires that you understand a bit of simulation, not rocket science, but uh, coming up with nice examples might be a bit challenging if you have never done it. Another approach is take an existing data set from a statistical software user manual or a book and then an example there, break it. So uh, I will show you soon seven different ways to break one example analysis and then uh, you can use those techniques to break your own working models give it to a colleague and tell them to troubleshoot using the techniques, the starting values, Hessian matrix, variance covariance matrix, estimating smaller models, that kind of things, and, and see if they can figure out the problem. One final thing that I sometimes use is that I see uh, researchers publishing data sets and models that possibly cannot work. I've seen uh, researchers publish uh, models that are not identified. And it's very hard to spot these in the wild, but sometimes you find a paper that publishes the data set, 
and shows an analysis result that cannot be from an identified model. And then that becomes a teaching case. So these are very, uh, very useful for students because they also uh, show them how important it is to understand diagnostics because just looking at the results might not reveal that the results themselves might not be that trustworthy. Of course, these are difficult to find because most people don't publish their data set, but some do, and you find some of them like uh, every, a few times per year. But now let's take a look at how you can break a model data combination. So I'm going to be using example 9 uh, from Stata's SCM manual, and uh, this is a, a simple SCM uh, with uh, three latent variables. So we have SCS, socioeconomic status, uh, that ex, uh, explains alien 67, alien 71, that are both, the all variables are measured with two indicators. And uh, this is the data code, the starting point, this is from Stata user manual. We'll just run it. And as expected, because this is a user manual example, it is kind of like a textbook example, then uh, everything works beautifully. One minor thing is that the chi-square rejects this model, so we should really try to understand why it's misspecified. But misspecification analysis is different from identification and uh, uh, conversions uh, troubleshooting analysis. So we'll ignore the fact now that this model does not fit the data exactly. But in real life, we would need to do diagnostics because of that. So how do we break? How do we make it not converge? I'll show you seven different ways. I could probably come up with more, but these are the seven that I, I came up with like in an hour or two. First, rescale a variable. SCM works well and the numerical optimization techniques work well when the variables are approximately on the same scale. And if we rescale education 66 by multiplying by the 100,000, this is not technically a violation of, of any of the SCM assumptions. So uh, the model should work, but computational issues start to emerge when the variables are measured on widely different scale. We run the model and we can see convergence is not achieved and our data does not really give us any other indication in the warnings on what exactly might be the problem. If we take a look at these missing standard errors, then we might be able to, uh, to start pinpointing where the problem is. And this problem could be perhaps best uh, uh, discovered by, by analyzing the, the Hessen matrix, where you can see that the magnitudes of the, uh, of the second derivatives are pretty, pretty different. And you would probably uh, note that, well, there is something weird going on in the data. Another one is, linear dependency between parameters, between uh, variables in the data. And this is a violation of the maximum likelihood estimator. There are other estimators. You, can, you, you could some perhaps do like unweighted least squares or something like that, which would be able to estimate this, but ML can't estimate one of these because there's, there's redundancy between the variables. Education 66 contains now no unique information. We would say that there the sample covariance matrix is not full rank because there are linear dependencies. This also breaks SCM. So you can see converge is not achieved. So how would we go troubleshooting this? Uh, this would be more of an identification issue kind of problem. So you might be looking at the, uh, the Hessen matrix and uh, a gradient vector to understand uh, where the problem actually is. Then you can use weird starting values. So starting values uh, or lack of starting values, starting values that are really bad, cause computational problems. The simplest way of, of having weird starting values is simply to disable state of starting value algorithm by using no IV start. And then uh, it is the user who is responsible for, for uh, setting the starting values. If you use no IV start, I think all parameters start at, at zeros or something like that. And uh, there, is, there is no convergence. So, so uh, you get this, this warning and then convergence is not achieved. Uh, these variances look pretty weird, ones and point ones. So because they are exact numbers, then that indicates that the optimizer does not really know what to do with them. So normally they have decimals, but in this case, the starting value is one and the optimizer doesn't know which way to go because they, it appears that probably uh, 
that appears as a maximum originally. But this would be identified either by printing the starting values, you might see that they are weird, or you might do a uh, print the, uh, the Hessian matrix to uh, see which, uh, which estimates are not identified. Then uh, you can do models that are not identified. So uh, in, the normal, in the first model, we had our SCS, Alien 67, Alien 71, all connected with regression paths. So I'm eliminating this regression path from SCS, Alien 67, Alien 71. So SCS is now a, a single two indicator factor that is not embedded in a larger system. We, I, to be sure, I set the covariance between SCS and this all other uh, uh, variables to, uh, to be zero and uh, the identification condition for a two indicator factor is that it must be connected sufficiently strongly to other factors to identify the loading. So this is not identified for sure and we can see here that convergence is not achieved, we have missing standard error, that's an identification, that's an indication of an identification problem and you might uh, be looking at the techniques for model identification to see what exactly is the problem and then you can see that it is the, uh, the uh, loadings of the SCS factor that are the problem here. We can also do uh, another model that fails because of decrease of freedom. So the decrease of freedom for this model is probably positive, but we have only uh, three covariances between latent variables and we're trying to estimate four paths. You can't estimate four things from three things, so it's not identified for sure. And we, we run the model. Surprisingly, there, is, there are no warnings. So some uh, researcher might actually think that these results are trustworthy because the software does not tell us anything. But a closer inspection uh, reveals that we have some very large uh, standard errors here. So uh, that would indicate that there is some kind of identification problem with the model. So large standard error is an indication of an identification problem. To fully understand the problem, uh, because we have convergence now, we would print out the variance covariance matrix of the estimates and then we would see which estimates are competing for the same, uh, for the same uh, covariance and we might see that these two directional paths, they can be estimated from these data. Then we have empirical under-identification. This is a data issue. So this uh, is very similar to the, uh, the case where I constrain SCS to be uncorrelated with the other two factors. Here I allow SCS to be related to the other factors, but I take the SC, uh, I take the, uh, the SCS, or actually I take the uh, the alien 67 indicators, and then I make those indicators uncorrelated with everything else in the model. So I basically take the, uh, the alien 67 variable, latent variable, and I make it unrelated to the other latent variables in this data set by, by this uh, orthogonalization, orthogonalization technique. And uh, this produces empirical under identification, no convergence, missing standard errors. You can uh, troubleshoot this with the identification uh, techniques that I've discussed in these videos. The final way to break a model that I'll demonstrate here is to uh, make a model that is severely misspecified. So my misspecification here is that I constrain these uh, indicators of Alien 67 and Alien 71 to be invariant over time, except that the 71 indicators are negatives of the 67 indicators. A more sneaky way of doing the same would be to constrain their indicators to load the same over time, but simply reverse code one occasion. Why does this break the model? It breaks the model because all these indicators are positively correlated in the sample, and this kind of constraint forces some of these estimates to be negative, and the computer doesn't like it. So when we run the model, we get this kind of weird result that the warning, the LR test is uh, uh, not reported because of identification issues. We don't get an error, but we can see that some of these standard errors are pretty huge. So that's an indication of model non-identification. We also see very large 
very small estimates for factor loadings they should be about in, uh, they should be a lot larger in this data and also negative factor loading is something that you generally should be looking at a bit more carefully to understand why there's a negative loading so that is seven different ways that you can break a model and uh, then these uh, seven different uh, ways can help you to uh, check how these various uh, estimation or troubleshooting techniques uh, work. So my, my uh, workflow for dealing with this is I would first read warnings if there are any, then I would check standard errors, I would eyeball identification issues after drawing a path diagram, print and start print starting values and adjust if needed, a print gradient and Hessen or print the uh, variance covariance matrix of the estimates that tells you something about identification quite often. Try different optimizer. It wouldn't solve any of these problems, but you might still try. Then estimate simpler models, use those as starting values. That might work for some of these cases. And then our empirical identification checks like simulating data sets or running the same model using different sets of starting values. So this identification checking and this uh, non-conversion diagnostics, they are something that if you just read or watch a video on YouTube, you are unlikely to learn it to a level which is going to be useful for you. So this requires practice and you can get the practice on a good course or you can get the practice using the techniques that I explained here. Take a model, break it and then try to identify what is the problem. And uh, this is actually how I generate some of my teaching cases. So I, I break a model, I give it to students, and then that forms their assignment. They have a week time uh, to discuss it together. And then after, after a week, we can see if they have come to a conclusion what the problem might be. Interestingly, quite often the students come up with different potential problems and only one of them would be correct.